Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Life in the Bronx Church. Hallelujah. I'm lead servant, Pastor Robert Cole, and as always, I love to welcome you to join us for this time of worship and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. As we celebrate the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, come on and, and, and join us and, and, and enjoy yourself as we rest in the peace and the love of our Father God in the mighty name of Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, um, it is it is a difficult time. You know, uh, uh, the cold weather, you gotta come out there and shovel, and, and you know, it's just a lot of times we're isolated, and, and the weather makes it seem like we're even more isolated as people uh, hunker inside. But I want to encourage each and every one of you to hold on to the Lord. It is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Amen. And God is true to his promise to keep us and to help us to overcome each and every challenge that we face. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Sing that to yourself. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. So, so, so just rest in the Lord at this time. I'm not even going to say you have to be happy or sad. I'm not going to put any conditions on you. All I want you to do is what God has told me to tell you, to rest in him, to come and let him minister to you and strengthen you so that you can go forth in the power of his Holy Spirit to do all that he has called for you to do. Amen. And, and uh, I'm reminded that this past Wednesday was Ash Wednesday, which means that we are in, for the Christian calendar, we are in the Lenten season, right? Uh, 40 days before we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The resurrection that brings salvation to all who believe. And, and I know some people uh, uh, give up something for Lent. It's traditional that, that people give up things for Lent. But I want you to know that if you choose to do that, and uh, we're not saying you have to, we're not saying it makes you any more Christian or not, but what it, do, what it should do, if you decide to uh, sacrifice something for Lent, it should be so that you can uh, direct your focus and your attention on God. That that which you're giving up will provide you an opportunity to spend time with your Father who art in heaven. Amen? Because whatever it is you decide to sacrifice, understand, it's not you, but it is the Lord operating through you. Our dependency is on the Lord. We live by his grace. It is by faith that we are made righteous. It is by his grace and faith and the power of his Holy Spirit that we are able to do great and mighty works. Amen. We don't do them. God does them through us. Hallelujah. As we depend on him. Amen. So I want to caution you to not allow this to become a time of works, a time of what you are doing. But make sure that this time is a time to draw closer to God, where God will be able to work through you and show you, as well as those who are around you, just how mighty he is when we surrender our lives to him. Amen. So once again, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. And before we uh, uh, continue in a time of prayer, I want to wish a very special happy birthday to my friend, Jacob Haley. Jacob, I understand your birthday is coming on uh, the 24th, I believe that is Wednesday also, uh, the 24th, Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those days. Jacob, may the good Lord bless you in a mighty way. Jacob, your heart is soft for the Lord, for the things of the Lord. And I want to pray in Jesus' name that, that 
the Lord would keep your heart soft and, and, and keep your ears tuned in to his mighty word. That as you grow, that you would not become, uh, what, confused by the things of the world. That you would not allow those things to crowd God out of your life. So many young people, I pray for all young people, and, but so many young people, you, you allow the things of this world that come and go to take you away from God who is eternal. Amen. So Jacob, I pray for you. And I, I ask everybody to pray for Jacob Haley, that his heart would stay soft for the Lord and that he would become a mighty man of God, amen, in whatever God has for him to do. So Jacob, happy birthday to you, young man. Happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you and give you many more years in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So as we continue to worship and praise the Lord, let us join together in this time of prayer in Jesus' mighty name, amen. In Colossians 1, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn of from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Lord, we worship you, the firstborn among all creation. We adore you. We lift you up. We put you front and center, and we worship you. Help us, God, to hear your word and to apply it and to place it in our hearts and make it, put it in the secret place. We need you, Lord. We need you to move in our lives. We need you to be front and center. Would you do that, Lord? Would you do that in Jesus' name? Amen. God is still in the business of moving, of healing, of slaying giants in your life and in mine. And I continue to trust him more and more each day. But we still have to ask, God, would you move? Move in our lives, move in our hearts, move in our government, move. We need you, we're here. So let's sing with all of our hearts and continue to ask God. Hallelujah. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Sing that again. Mountains. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Bodies, bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you, come and do what you do. We are here for you, come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you, come 
come and do what you do. We need a Mountains are still being moved, yes, sir. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. We need. We need a move. Miracles happen, miracles happen when you move, healing is coming in this room, miracles happen when you move, heaven is coming, miracles happen when you move, healing is coming Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming. Miracles happen. Healing is coming. Miracles happen. Heaven is coming. We are here. Worship this. This is move. This is move. We worship you, Lord. What are you trusting God for? Healing, deliverance from a stronghold. Strongholds are being loosed in your life in the name of Jesus. I believe it. We can see it, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. We trust you. Hallelujah. Just take a moment and breathe in the Holy Spirit. There's nothing worth more 
And I will ever come close No thing can compare You're our living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen On the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is Your prayer. 
peace and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence Spirit, one more time. Come on. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, that is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord.
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I would like to thank Reverend Orlando and his lovely wife, Sister Maritza, for that time of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for leading us in that time of praise and preparing us to hear from the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just want to sing this song before I start. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, there's something about that name. And I just want to continue to encourage you to encourage yourself in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, allow the Lord to lift you up. Call on the name of Jesus. Allow the Lord to lift you up and carry you over each obstacle that comes in your way. Praise God, praise God. You know, in Romans chapter 9 and 10, uh, uh, it was revealed that there were many Jewish people who did not accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. They rejected God's plan for salvation that comes through Christ and Christ alone. These chapters also revealed that in the Old and New Testament, uh, that those who rejected God's plan were left to their own wicked ways, and they did not receive God's promise, his promised gift, of salvation. Yet, Romans did continue to inform the reader that there was a small group of Jewish people that did believe God's message and did believe God's plan for salvation by grace alone. These individuals held strong to the plan of God and were saved because they believed. These individuals were called remnant. They were the remnant of the Jewish people that, that we're going to learn today that God kept for himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Despite uh, uh, the actions and the decisions of the majority. You know, how many of you know you cannot follow, always follow the majority? But uh, uh, despite the actions and, and the decisions of the majority of the Jewish people, these individuals believed by God's grace, and were saved. Uh, these Israelites served to prove that God did not forsake his chosen people, Israel, but by his grace, he forgave them and raised them up in righteousness. Hallelujah. In today's sermon, we will learn how God was faithful. That's right. Faithful to his people. And, he, and, and that God did not reject them, but saved those who accepted his message by faith and accepted his gift of salvation by grace, not by works. So today, I've entitled uh, today's sermon, God, who did not forsake the Jews, will not forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. God, who did not forsake his chosen people, Israel, who did not forsake the Jewish people, will not forsake you, who believe and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I believe that as we read about God's relationship with his chosen people, Israel, there is much that we can learn about how God deals with us as believers today. So today we're going to uh, read and study Romans chapter 11. Hallelujah. We're moving along. 
Romans chapter 11, verses 1 to verse 6. Once again, that's Romans chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 6, where the primary question referred, uh, referred in, in, in this passage is, has God rejected his chosen people, Israel? As always, before we read today's scripture, let's, let's join in a time of prayer and ask God to anoint us to hear his word and understand his word, to anoint this time, to set this time apart for us to worship him. Hallelujah. Pray with me, if you would, please. Father God who art in heaven, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that you are the God of promise and that you are a promise keeper. Father, as we come to you today, there are so many things in our lives. Father, there are so many uh, uh, different thoughts battling for our time, the time and, and, and the space in our, our minds. But Father, you have the words of eternal life. And you, O oh Father, are able to keep us and sustain us through each and every obstacle that comes in our path. And so, Father, we call on you right now, in the name of Jesus, to speak to us and give us ears to hear and give us a mind to understand the wonderful things of your kingdom. Father, bless us and still us that we may sit before you during this time to hear your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, please open your Bibles. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 11, verse 1, as we read from verses 1 to verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Give yourself a hallelujah. Give yourself an amen. Give yourself a praise the Lord. Oh, encourage yourself. Hallelujah. You feel yourself getting a little sleepy? Encourage yourself in the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's right. Encourage yourself. Don't let anyone or anything attempt to keep you down. Call on the name of the Lord and he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, Romans chapter 11 verse 1 reads like this. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, said Paul, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people, whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets and have torn down your altars. I am the only one left, and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So, too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Amen? By grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your holy word. Uh, in, 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 chapters, in verse 6, it says, if it were, meaning if it were by works, then grace would not be grace. Or in other words, we could say God would not be God. Hallelujah. If you can do it on your own, if you can make yourself righteous, if you can keep yourself righteous, if you could obey all that God has, has, has instructed his people to do, then God would not be God. You would. But hallelujah, God is God, and he's faithful to his promises. And that's what we're going to, to, to study and, and, and learn today, that God is faithful Faithful, hallelujah, to his promises. Hallelujah. He was faithful to the Jewish people 
He's chosen people with his promises, and he's faithful to us today who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, uh, we saw in chapter 10, let's, we saw in chapter 10 that God offered himself to the Gentiles through faith in Jesus. Uh, so Paul asked the logical question, the question that had to be on the minds of, of the Israelites in the audience. Because remember, that's who he was speaking to. Uh, has God rejected? This is the question they wanted to know. If God has accepted the Gentiles, then has God rejected his chosen people, Israel? Does accepting the Gentiles mean that he is no longer con uh, considering his special relationship with Israel? Has he cut Israel off? That becomes the question. It is a question that those who consider themselves justified by works ask themselves when they realize that they have failed to keep God's commandments completely. To which Paul gives an emphatic negative response. He doesn't mince words here. He says, by no means. God has not rejected his chosen people because salvation is based on God's grace and not on one's actions or strengths. Paul is trying to help them understand that, that it's not based on your works. You know, as we go around, uh, as our, our, our congregation goes around and ministers the gospel, we meet many people who do not believe that they can come into the presence of God, that they, are, they believe that they are unworthy to come into the house of the Lord. Why? Because they have not uh, uh, obeyed his commandments, because they have done some uh, things in their lives that, uh, they, that, that caused them and others to deem them unworthy to come into the house of the Lord. But we always remember that it is by grace, not by works. It is God's decision. If God says that you can, uh, can seek forgiveness in the name of Jesus and that if you call on the name of Jesus that you will be saved, that's God's prerogative. Amen? That's God's prerogative. He is sovereign, we have learned in Romans. He is sovereign, and he can do as he pleases. And he has promised that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you too shall have the gift of salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Eternal life comes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's not based on what you have done. It's based on on who you believe. Amen. It's not by works, but by God's grace. Hallelujah. So, so uh, the, the Israelites that, that, that know they failed have to be wondering, uh, has God given up on us? Is, is there any uh, chance that we can be, once again, his chosen people? Hallelujah. Paul answers, like I said, with an emphatic negative responses, Paul answers, by no means. May this never be. His support, uh, he supports his claim by stating that he himself is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, which means he comes from Father Abraham. Amen? This, re point, this uh, response rather points us, points to the fact that God keeps his promise. Paul is a, a living testimony. He rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. He sought after those who were believers of Jesus Christ and uh, uh, put them to death. But as the Bible says, while God shows his love for us that while we are sin, while we sin, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God shows his love. And this is what he is trying to get across to us. That it's not by our might, not by our power, not by our ability, not by what we have done or what we will do. But it is by the Spirit of God. It is by God's grace. It is by God's choice that we are saved. Amen. 
We are saved because of God and God alone. Uh, Paul's response points to the fact that God keeps his promise. As believers, we can place our trust in God and, and, and we can place our trust in his promises because by grace, God will not forget you. By his grace, he will keep his promises to you. God wants us to remember that he who did not reject the Jews will not reject you, the believer in Christ. God will not reject you as he has not rejected the people of Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul is, is, is preparing. He's preparing his argument that God has not rejected his chosen people, even after they have rejected him. This is an example of God's grace and love for us. Uh, it, it, is, it is a reminder of last week's sermon that God is not weak. He loves. Amen. He, he's not weak when he, when he forgives us. He's not weak when he allows us to reject him, but yet still comes after us. He's not weak, he's love. That's what love does. Love continues to go after those who were rejected. Love continues to go, uh, 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 not who were rejected, but love continues to go after those who even reject you. Love continues with the mission the mission of salvation, amen? And that's what God is doing today. God is love, and he's continuing his message of salvation. God's willingness and his ability to forgive is an extension of God's love, his love for us, and, and, and not his inability to deal with sin. God will deal with sin. The Bible says clearly, the wage of sin is death. Hallelujah. Death is the price that is paid for sin. But, hallelujah, thank you for that. But, thank you for that turnaround. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Encourage yourself with that. Encourage yourself with that word. The wage of sin is death. Acknowledge that you have, uh, that you deserve, you deserve uh, the punishment. You have, you have uh, broken your relationship with God. But don't stop there. Remember, because this is the power of the gospel. Remember that although you deserve and though, although I deserve punishment, God gave me the free gift of salvation when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. God, uh, he has dealt with sin through the death of and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which has, which, who, who has rather obtained victory for us over sin and death. If you remember anything, please recall that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have eternal life, the gift of salvation. Amen? If you don't remember anything else, remember that, because that is the gospel that brings salvation to all who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 2. Verse 2, Paul states that God did not reject his chosen people. Praise God. He adds that God foreknew them. And in Romans 8, 29, he noted that those who God foreknew, he predestined to become like Christ. Amen. He predestined those who he foreknew to be in the image of Christ. Amen. Now, I would warn you, though, I would warn you uh, not to believe that that means all Jewish people will be saved. Because uh, in that chapter, he also stresses, in, in, or in Romans, he also stresses that the mind governed by the flesh right? Uh, our desire, our sinful desire is hostile to God. Those people cannot please God, but 
the believer, the believer who has the spirit of God in him will be given life because of the spirit who lives in him. Salvation is only, is only, and that's a big only, it's only for those who believe. Therefore, the predestined are those who believe in salvation through Christ Jesus. The predestined could not be those who do not believe. To them, to those who believe, to the Jewish people who believe, God will keep his promise of salvation. Amen for the Jew as well as the Gentile. Just like the believer today. Salvation is, salvation is offered to all people. However, only those who believe and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be saved. Verse 2 informs us that those, that, that these are the Jewish people that God will not cast away, the ones who believe. For Christ, Christ promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul noted that God has not rejected him. And now, and now using uh, uh, the prophet Elijah as an example, he will show that there are others just like him. People that have not turned their back on God. The remnant who God has not turned his back on them. Verse 3. In verse 3, Paul cites 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, verses 10 to 18, where Elijah, while on the mountain of God in Horeb, meets with God. You know, remember when it comes to God comes through a big storm. Uh, you know, God comes many different ways, but he's not there. But when everything is still and quiet, that's where the presence of the Lord is. Amen. Uh, uh, it's the place where God, where, where uh, Elijah meets God uh, and God asks him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah's response states that he's there because the Israelites have rejected God, leaving him alone to worship God, him alone to worship God. And now they are even attempting to kill him. God showed Elijah as, as, as Paul Shows, showed uh, his audience. And as God is revealing to us today, God has reserved, right? God has done it. Amen. Hallelujah. God has reserved 7,000 kings tells us, first kings tells us, that God has reserved 7,000 in Israel that have not bowed down to Baal. God kept uh, God has kept a remnant, a, a, a group of individuals that have not rejected his plan for salvation. Notice God has, it's God who reserves this remnant by his own power and grace. He does not speak about the actions or the behaviors of others, but he takes responsibility upon himself because he is the Savior. He is God. He is the one who keeps his promise. Amen? Do you not realize that we cannot keep God's promise? God has to keep his promise. We didn't make the promise. We can't keep the promise. So my question becomes, why do we continue to take responsibility for salvation? Why do we take responsibility for trying to be righteous in our own strength when it is God and God alone? who makes us righteous by his grace. Hallelujah. So just as God reserved a remnant who would not turn their backs, who had not turned their backs, but would be in the, that, that same remnant would be in the image of Christ. So we need, we need not focus on uh, uh, the many that are using the name of Christ to do evil. We need not be surprised. We need not focus on those who are running around today claiming 
to uh, do the evil acts that they do, to oppress others. We need not keep our eyes on them, but uh, we can keep our focus on Christ, amen, who keeps God's promise of salvation to the remnant that hear his voice and are saved by grace and not works. Even though the Israelites have, have rejected God's plan for salvation, Jesus Christ, he has not given up on his promise to them, nor changed their status as his chosen people by saving a remnant for him. Amen. You see that? God is the one who will ensure that he, his promise comes to pass. It's God who does it. And God said, well, 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 just think about this. God saying, well, my people are turning away. Or the evil one, the devil saying, God, your people are turning their backs on you. Your promise will not come true. God tells them, don't you worry. I have a remnant that I have kept so that my promise would be fulfilled. Do you see this? God is the one who fulfills his promises. God makes the promise and he takes responsibility for fulfilling his promise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God is not waiting for us to fulfill the promise. God is waiting for us to look to him, to call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to place our dependency on him. God doesn't need us to be righteous. He needs us to be surrendered, surrendered to him in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So, so God doesn't change the status of his people. He makes sure that there is a remnant for him to keep his promise with. It is the group of believers that God will fulfill his promise through, the remnant. Proving the God who saves the Jews, the God who does not reject the Jews, will also save you. Amen. Hallelujah. You can trust God. You can trust God with your life. You can trust God with, with, with everything you have. You can trust God to carry you through. You can call on his name. You can follow his ways. You do not need to go your own way. You do not need to solve issues in, on your own. You need to follow God and let God take you through the valley of the shadow of death without fearing evil. Hallelujah. You need to let God speak to that mountain. You know, I know a lot of us like to quote that. Say unto that mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in, its, in the sea. And, and, and do not doubt, but believe that it will happen. Where do you think you get that faith from? Where do you think you get that belief from? That belief comes from God. Amen. From God. So let God speak through you. Let God minister to others through you. Let God minister to your spirit through you. Hallelujah. Let God be God in your life and let God uh, uh, speak the truth and everyone else be a liar. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can trust and depend on God's promises. Let's go to verse 5. We're moving. We're moving. Hallelujah. So there is a remnant chosen how? By grace. What that means is, uh, uh, or, or another way to say that is, there is a remnant saved by God's power, not by their own. They are not depending on themselves for salvation. They are depending on God. Amen. The remnant has not, the remnant rather, has not earned their place in God's kingdom. Just as Christians today are not able to earn their place. We are not able to earn our place in God's kingdom by acting righteous. We must depend on Jesus' name. We must depend on God to do the work for us, in us, and through us. Amen. We must rely on God to sanctify us, to set us apart. We don't do this by stopping certain behaviors. We do this by keeping our eyes on 
Christ. Amen. Are you getting that understanding? You know, we can say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I've done that. I've done that. I've sinned and said, okay, I, that's my last time. No more. No more. And, and only to, to, to when in a moment of weakness, to give back into that sin. You know why? Because I, 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 I used the wrong formula. You see, I tried to depend on myself. I would not do. But as I continue to learn by God's grace that I don't have to say what I will not do, but that I could rely on God, hallelujah. I say, Father God, help me. Then that desire, that desire to sin is taken away. Amen. It doesn't just uh, uh, mysteriously go away, but God takes it from me so that I may stand in his grace and he is the one who delivers me out of the hand of sin amen i think you need to get that understanding understanding that the righteous the righteous are saved by faith and not by their own ability to perform any type of work you know grace grace the grace of god cannot be a mixture or it cannot be mixed with good works it cannot. Either you believe that righteousness is obtained by works or you believe that righteousness is obtained by faith and grace. In Romans chapter 3, <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 10 and 20, Paul already has already stated that it is impossible to obtain salvation by works. It's impossible to do it in your own strength. You must depend and, and, and you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, you must call on the name of Jesus, for he is the only one who has paid for sin. None of us, none of us, no one before us, and none of us have paid the wage for sin. <coughs> <clears throat> we have not. We only Christ has. And so as we depend on Christ, he is the one who saves. And by his resurrection, as God lifted him up, God lifts those who believe up out of the power of sin. So Paul closes today's scripture in verse 6, emphasizing that we are saved by grace. In other words, by God's power, not our own. Noting that if we are saved by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If we are saved by God, <coughs> oh, I need some water. If we are saved by God, then we cannot be, we cannot save ourselves. If we are saved by ourselves, by our own works, then we are not depending on God. Amen? Then we are not depending on God. You cannot have it both ways. You can't serve two masters. You're going to love the one and hate the other. You're going to follow the one and, and despise the other. Hallelujah. If you are able to obtain righteousness on your own, on your own strength, then God's grace would be no longer God's grace. If you can do it on your own, grace is not grace. God is not God. There's no need for him. Paul here is encouraging his Jewish audience as Christ is encouraging us today to place our faith in God and his promise. And do not get lost in the works or the rules of mankind. Do not let anybody put you in bondage. It is by God's grace. People are so concerned
They are so concerned with showing that, uh, uh, that they can do by themselves, that they continue to trip over the fact that salvation is given to us by God alone. Paul has already stated that if you can compare yourself to God's law, you will continue to fall short <coughs> of his glory and his righteousness. This is simply because God does not expect you to meet his standards. His standards are there to show that you need help. His standards are there to show that you need mercy. His standards are there to show that we need Jesus. He wants you to know that you can look to him, meaning you can call on the name of Jesus, allowing him to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. This does not mean that you cannot be successful or that you should not take on the challenges you will incur, uh, encounter accomplishing your goals. What it does mean is that you will, you will learn to call on his name when you encounter those challenges. Expecting, and you will do so expecting God to come through and to raise you up during the darkest time out of the darkness into his marvelous light. You will expect God to, to pick you up during the worst storms and to put you on solid and peaceful ground. It means that we can expect, you can expect God to keep his promise, to never leave you nor to forsake you. For God, who did not reject the Jews, will not reject you when you accept his son in Jesus' mighty name. Would you do that? Has God spoken to you today? Will you surrender your life? Hallelujah. We go forward in the power, by the power of God's Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that we do not engage in challenges, but what it does mean is that we do not go alone. We accept God. We accept Jesus. We call on his name, and we invite the Holy Spirit to take us through the valley of the shadow of death without fearing evil, for God is with you, and he is your, he is your, he is your rock. Amen? Will you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? By, re, by reciting the prayer of salvation that, that, that acknowledges that you are a sinner, pray to God and let him know, God, I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. But I know. Then acknowledge that you know that Christ has come to forgive sin and to set you free. Just by saying, I know that Jesus has come, that you have given the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And then acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Receive him, accept him as your Lord and Savior. And give God praise and thanks for not only giving you his promise of eternal life, not only giving you his promise of a better life today, but for keeping his promise. For the God who has not rejected the Jews will not reject you. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you, and until we meet again, may the Lord keep you in his perfect peace. Amen. <laughs>